Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this video we continue looking at multi-threading and the parallel collections in Scala and in particular we're going to apply the parallel collections on what is actually a fairly simple problem. It's, it's a, the category referred to as embarrassingly parallel because all of the calculations can be done completely independent of each other. They don't have to talk at all. Uh, but it will produce a pretty picture and it's, it's a kind of a fun example to do and it's the the Mandelbrot fractal. So we will make inside of here another object no caps there. Okay, Mandelbrot that'll be sufficient and we'll define our main. Uh, actually, let's go to the to this and I'm going to copy out some of this code up from the top. Um, control shift O. Yes, we want the swing version. Okay. Um, in this case, I really don't need All this, we're going to fill the entire image. Um, we make a panel, it draws that image. I am going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 500 by 500. Okay, and now uh, what we need to do it's not crystal growth, it's man the We need to open the frame. Uh, in this case, though, before we open the frame, we because well, I guess let's, yeah, before we open the frame, we should go ahead and fill in the image. And so the way this is going to work is I am basically going to write two uh, for loops, or in the case of Scala, I'm actually I can do this in one for loop. It's just it'll have two generators. So I'm going to have I go not height, get height and J go from zero until IMG dot get width. That should be a semicolon, not an L. And what I want to do in here is val count equals calc mandel of a real value and an imaginary value and then we will plot something and at least to start off with let's just do this if count if count is less than max count then img dot set rgb at j comma i comma color dot if it's less I'm gonna go with black dot get rgb else we'll go with white. Okay, so we're going to write this and we're actually going to write it so that it is completely sequential to start with um, and then we'll see how the parallel collections make it easy to parallelize. Uh, so here we have a call to calc mandel which we need to define. So calc mandel is going to take a real part and a an imaginary part um, and the way the Mandelbrot works let's actually go ahead and let's put in a comment uh, so we'll calculate the number of iterations of the Mandelbrot 
sequence um, before magnitude goes above 4 or uh, up to max. Okay, so we need to pass in a real value, an imaginary value. The way the Mandelbrot sequence works, if you're not familiar with it, is that each time through, z is set equal to z squared plus c. c and z are both complex values, so they're points in the complex plane. c is the point that you are doing the initial calculation for. The initial value of z is zero, and then you repeat this over and over and over again. And there's two possibilities. Either it stays close to zero, or it blows up and goes off to infinity. It turns out if, if its magnitude gets above four, you've definitely, you're definitely blowing up. Um, and so the, we want to iterate this. Now, if it, is, if it stays finite, it's in the set. Now, of course, we can't run it forever, so we have to give it some maximum value that we want. And so I'm gonna pass in CR and CI, which are both doubles. And I'm going to go ahead and pass in a max count, which is an int, and this returns an int for how many iterations it takes. So, what do I want to do here? Well, var, the real part of z, starts off as 0.0. .0. The imaginary part of z starts off as 0.0. .0. And a count which is how many iterations we go through, starts off as zero. And then I'm going to say while, two things. One, while count is less than max count. And while zr times zr plus zi times zi is less than 16. Okay. Uh, I could take a square root here, but why take a square root? if you don't have to. Uh, I'll just square the four. Um, the choice of four is somewhat arbitrary. Uh, you could actually use something slightly smaller in, but this works well for us. Uh, okay, so while that, what do we need to do? Well, one of the things that we need to do, and I put this here now because otherwise I will inevitably forget it, is to increment count. And then I need to set new values for ZR and ZI. Okay. Um, so, actually this is a point where I often like to meh, break this up into uh, pieces. In this case, I won't. The new ZR, okay, so actually let me write this the way that's wrong first and then I'll explain why it's wrong. So. Once again, this the new z value should be z squared plus c. When you square the imaginary, or when you square a complex number, the real part that you get is equal to the square of the real part minus the square of the imaginary part, and then in this case, plus the real part of c. And the new imaginary part, well, from the square here, you wind up with uh, the imaginary part being two times ZR times ZI, and then plus the imaginary part of C. Now, this is wrong, and so the question is, well, why is this wrong? Well, it's wrong because that value of ZR right there will be the updated value and not the earlier value. So in order to not do that, I need to introduce another variable. In this case, I'm going to create an in ZR so that when I do this line, I'm using the old value of ZR, and then I can change the value of ZR to the new value there. And then I increment count, and then we come down. OK. Last thing that needs to happen 
is that these values R and I don't exist yet. I guess I could put the C's on there just so the, they match, so it really doesn't matter. Um, and so I don't have single letter variable names. So how do we get CR and CI? Well, I need to convert from these pixel counts into complex values. So in order to do that, um, it's actually code probably compiles at this point. I just comment out those lines. So I have this big square here and what I want to do is I want it so that every pixel in here is, corresponds to a position in the complex number plane. In order to do that, because I know, okay, for x this is 0 and this is image width dot minus 1 and that's 0 and that's image height minus 1, but I need to uh, figure out, okay, well what is this edge in my plot in the complex number plane? So I need to create some variables in here the x minimum I'm going to set to be minus one point or not the x, how about I call it the real minimum well the real maximum is equal to 0.5 the imaginary minimum will be minus one and the imaginary maximum will be one let's add some point o's in there to make sure that we are getting doubles on this and then we can calculate the values for CR and CI. So CR, the real part is across the width, it is our X axis, and so it is equal to the R min plus the value of R max minus R min times J divided by IMG dot get width. And so that gives us a value that goes linearly from R min up to R max. And you can see this because if J is zero, well this entire term goes to zero, and so it's just R min. If J is at its maximum, it's basically equal to the width, it's technically the width minus one. Um, I'm not really worried about that here. Then this part becomes one, and so I have R min plus R max minus R min, which is of course R max. I want to do the same thing for the imaginary part. And it scales as I and should use the height. And now this code compiles. And we run it. And there's a Mandelbrot set. Okay, uh, and you could play different games with this, but what I want to do is make it so it happens in parallel, actually. And I'm going to add a few zeros into there. Um, I want to go just far enough that maybe we could see a speed up. Maybe that was too many zeros. <laughs> Definitely too many zeros. I want there to be a pause, which there wasn't earlier. Okay. So we could come in and put timing code. The, the, what I really want to illustrate here, though, is just how simple it is to make this so that it happens in parallel. And turns out that's what I need to do and if we run this there you go um, not only did the delay look a little bit shorter it turns out I'm watching the load bar on the machine it actually the load went higher you can play all types of games with with this you could set it so that you have the ability to zoom in on stuff make the window bigger make it so instead of just being black and white it puts a nice color gradient based upon the value of, of count um, but on the topic of parallelism, you might wonder, well, why did I make this parallel and not make this parallel? Uh, I could have made both. Making both is kind of pointless. I could make it so the outer one wasn't parallel, but the inner one was. But when you think about these parallel tasks, you need to think about the granularity. And so, really, there's no point in kind of giving a thread the task of doing a single pixel. You can do it that way. Uh, but it's probably too fine of grain, especially since most of the pixels are going to return very, very quickly. You're wasting time by scheduling tasks to different threads. So instead I put it on the basically the outer loop here 
so that it gets an entire row across. And so one thread does an entire row of pixels, which is a large enough chunk of work that it should keep the thread busy for a while. Um, and then, of course, we run down all of these, and they're distributed through the, the different threads. Turns out that the parallel collections are very smart in how they distribute work. So as these are running down, the white areas actually take a lot longer than the other. So, so let's say it broke this across four threads. Well, for the most part, the four threads will be working here, you know, just just going down. Actually, the way it, this probably doesn't use four threads. It gives more. And the reason for that is because the parallel collections are set up with the ability to do work stealing. So each thread is given a queue of different values that, that it's going to calculate. So maybe the first thread is a you know, number of different lines in here. Technically, it could be just a chunk. might be easier to think about. If it were a chunk, then maybe one thread gets a chunk up here and another thread gets a chunk down here. The thread that gets this chunk in the middle would have the most work to do because there's the most white area in here. So it's actually going to finish last. And the way that the, uh, the parallel collections work, if this one is still working and the others have finished, they will steal work from this one so that it no longer has to do the entire chunk and that way it keeps things load balanced uh, for longer. So the parallel collections actually have a lot of additional effort that goes into them to make it so that they do the parallel intelligently. So that's it for, uh, for looking at parallel collections. We're going to come back in the next video and look at uh, give a brief look to the actors library, um, how we can use it to more easily spawn threads.